Welcome to part two of my Normende radio restoration. In part one I got the radio working and replaced the old capacitors. I also cleaned the chassis up a bit. I substituted the faulty magic eye with the Russian substitute magic eye. This week I'm going to replace the selenium rectifier and do an AM FM alignment. I'm just going to break into this video. This video was finished and then a comment came through from Dirk in Belgium. And I thank Dirk very much. Uh, he pointed out an error I made in part one and I'm just going to remedy that now. You'll recall that I had a 0.01 capacitor that had a shield around it. Now I thought it was just a capacitor with a shield. Now Dirk's pointed out that it's actually got a resistor in it as well. There's the original capacitor, 0.01, and it's got a plus 10 meg, and I didn't see that. It, would, it probably wouldn't have occurred to me if I'd seen it. Anyway, uh, it's, it has got a resistor in there, and I'll show you. Here's the capacitor. I've started pulling it apart. It's just got the two leads here connected to the multimeter, and uh, it's reading 10 meg or 11, 11 something, but it's a 10 meg resistor in there, so he's absolutely right. So there it is. It's got an outer foil shield, is, which is what I thought, and this lead is connected to it. Uh, but then inside here, you can just see the end of a 10 meg resistor. Both are shielded with this foil, and that's to stop any uh, AC or um, RF noise getting into it. So now I've got to work out a way of replicating this. Here is the capacitor and resistor I need to use. Uh, I'm thinking of somehow putting them in line and then wrapping the foil around and connecting them up as it's supposed to be. That's the first step. I've uh, mounted the resistor on the capacitor lead uh, so it's in a nice line. I need to now make some sort of container for it so that I can uh, get a nice flat cylinder to wrap some foil or whatever around it. I've just wrapped the capacitor and the resistor in a bit of masking tape there and I'll just hold it there. I've mixed up a bit of smooth cast plastic casting and I'm just going to pour it over here hopefully and I still haven't got any eyedroppers or syringes. So I just need to leave that set for about 10 minutes and we'll see what it looks like. That's been 10 minutes, we'll see how we went. Yeah, that's excellent. A little bit out of shape, but not too bad. That's what I've ended up with. I used the old foil off the old capacitor, so uh, that worked out pretty well. And I've soldered on the resistor there as well. So we've got our 10 meg back, and our capacitor is reading 0 0.1, so everything's working fine. Cool. All right, that's all done. Uh, I made a little label up and I've put it in heat shrink there just to let know, everyone know that it's uh, what's inside the little package. It's got insulation on the resistor lead just to make sure it doesn't touch the other uh, capacitor lead here. I'll go and swap that out with the other one that's in the radio a bit later on. Before I go, after I'd finished filming part two, um, I decided to change all these white capacitors. I actually measured a few more of them and they, they were a bit out of tolerance. So I've taken them all out and uh, replaced them with new ones. So once again, thanks uh, Dirk for finding that for me and uh, letting me know. I apologise for the interruption, we'll go back to part two now. Uh, today I thought I'd look at this selenium rectifier, it needs to be removed, I don't leave those in. I was able to get a new diode block rectifier this morning, I was not going anywhere because of the virus, but uh, I was forced to go out this morning, so I pre-ordered it and just picked it up from the shop and got out of there. So before I take it out, I'll just see what the voltages were. I did check them earlier, and they seem to be pretty good, but uh, we'll just see what they got. Now I've got everything set up. Um, I've got 240 on the on the volts coming in, uh, which is what the radio is set to. So we'll just see what voltages we get. There's our rectifier there. The voltage uh, straight out of the rectifier should be 230 and 250. So 250 on medium wave and 230 on, short on the FM. Okay, the radio is nice and warm. Uh, here's where it comes straight out of the rectifier. We'll see what we've got. I've got it in medium wave. And we've got 248. It should be 250, so that's good. I'll just put it on FM. We'll see what we get. Straight out of the rectifier, uh, 243. A little bit low. So I'm going to put the diode rectifier in and uh, we'll see what happens. This should go up. Uh, selenium's sucking some of the power out. There's a little rectifier there still. Uh, I've bought a square one to replace it, or I've got the, another choice, I can put this flat one. I reckon that one actually might work pretty well. I'll see which one's the better one to fit, and uh, I'll put that in.
Oh, that's come out quite neat. I'm very happy with the way that's worked out. Now I'll put some power on. We'll check that voltage again. Now it's on 240. I'm going to wind it back because I expect this to be a bit high. Maybe I'll take it back to, I don't know, 210. So I put some power on. Now I've got the meter set on the output of the rectifier. So uh, well, we've got 300 at the moment. That'll drop off as the valves heat up. And we're looking for 230 and 250, if I recall. Okay, settle on 258. Now I had a closer look at that schematic we looked at before and I thought it said 230 and 250 but it's 250 for both. So I'm on FM at the moment. I'll just flick it over to AM and we shouldn't see much difference. Okay, two, yeah, two, 260 both of them. Uh, so that's too high. So I need to find out how much I need to drop the voltage. So uh, we've got 210 going in. I don't want to run it too hard. So 220, we've got uh, 275 and 230, we've got about uh, 285. I'll just wind it back again. So we need to drop about 30 volts. That's quite a bit. I've done a bit of calculations and I think I need somewhere in the 300 to 400 ohm uh, resistance to get down the 40 volts. It seems a lot, so I'll have to see how that comes out. I've just set up a couple of resistors in series here to get up to, what have we got, 370. Uh, we'll see what happens. This um, line here is going off to the meter. Uh, so this is coming straight from the rectifier and then it goes back into the smoothing cap. I'm going to put it on dim bulb in case I've done something silly. Uh, I've got 209 there like we had before. Switch it on. That's about right. Now again we're looking for about 250 and this will go past, there you go. Okay, the radio's on. So I'll just let it settle for a minute. Okay, that seems to have settled. Now we've got 222, I'll wind it up to about our 240, 230. Now the voltage in Australia is supposed to be 230. Uh, but it'll range. It used to be 240. Now they dropped it to 230, but a lot of the companies didn't actually do anything. So I'll go somewhere in the center. Where are we? 236, and it's on 250. Okay, that's uh, that's perfect. So if we went to 240, we've got 257. If we go down to 230, which is about the range, which in the supply we get, we've got 244, so, uh, yeah, okay, well, that, that's, that was a good guess. Now, these these 10 watts should be ample. I don't think they'll go close to that. Maybe um, two or three, four watts each, perhaps, if I could calculate that. Hang on. For those that are interested, I thought I'd just show you how I arrived at the resistance I needed to drop that 30 to 40 volts. So to start with, we needed to drop, we'll say, 40 volts. And the schematic said the current flow at that point was uh, 100 milliamps. So we need to find the resistance. We've got the voltage and the current. So we use Ohm's law. VIR, the voltage, the current and resistance. We need to find the resistance. So R equals V over I. Which means R equals volts, which is 40. And I'll just change the milliamps to amps, so it'll be 0 0.1. So that's 40 divided by 0 0.1, which is uh, 400. So 400 ohms. Now I needed to find the wattage as well. So we use the power formula. Whoops. So power uh, is a current by voltage. So that equals uh, 40 by... Oops. By 0.1 and 40 by 0.1 is uh, 4 watts and that will be in watts. So I need a resistor at 4 watts and 400 ohms and I ended up with uh, I think uh, 370. 370 ohm resistor in, in series. The two 10 watt resistors I had were just too big I couldn't fit them anywhere in the radio so I've got uh, a couple of 5 watt at 180 
ohm resistors on order. They're coming from the electronic shop this afternoon, I hope. So the two 180s in series will be 360 ohms. Resistance total, they should dissipate the heat a bit better than uh, one big resistor. Now I just need to find somewhere to mount them on this uh, chassis. There's not a lot of room in there, so uh, I'll have to go and have a look and uh, see what I can come up with. Well, that's the solution I came up with for mounting the uh, resistors. So there's the resistors hanging on the bottom there. Um, I initially hung them on the top of the radio, but the wires running to the resistor were inducing a hum into the radio, so I had to uh, relocate it to the bottom. Made a bracket to fit on an existing bracket, and the resistors are mounted on there. So all in all, not a bad result, and uh, um, they're cool enough to touch. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, when the resistors were by themselves, uh, they were quite hot. You couldn't hang on to them at all. So this is dissipating the heat pretty well. Uh, they're probably running at about 50, 55 degrees, uh, just using my finger as a thermometer. Now I put a little temperature sensor in there just to see exactly what we're at. And that sensor is up against one of the resistors and it's uh, stabilised at 64. This radio has been running for about half an hour at this. It's quite a warm day actually, uh, So, but it stopped at about 64. Now I guessed that it was about 50 to 55 hanging onto the outside there, but we're not measuring there. I'll see if we can. I'm just holding the thermocouple against the heatsink with a tie wrap. And the temperature is 55.7, and I guessed 50 to 55. It was a bit out there. So it was 0.8 out, 0.7 out. Uh, now 55 is about 130 odd, 131 or 2 degrees Fahrenheit. These resistors at this temperature, they're going to last for years. There won't be any problem with those. Anyway, that's the selenium rectifier solution. I'll move on to the next item on the list. Uh, this radio is not very stable in any of its positions, so I just made up a little wooden stand for it to sit on. It just has a couple of screws holding holding it onto the timber bit, so uh, make it a bit easier. I can stand it up at one end or lie it down, whatever. Today I thought I might try the AM alignment. I've cleaned the chassis up and I've put the glass back on. The magic eyes fitted. Um, that's working pretty well. I'm happy with that now. It looked a bit dull last night, but uh, when I put it in the housing and everything, it's it's quite all right. So I'm going to do the AM alignment to start with. I've got it in M, which is AM or medium wave. I've got the instructions here for doing the AM alignment. Unfortunately, it's in German and I don't speak or understand German, but I typed all these uh, letter by letter into uh, Google Translate and came up with the English translation. So I recreated the sheet uh, with it on it in English, but unfortunately my printer is not working very well, so it's it's uh, running out of toner. So I can, I, I can understand most of it now. Um, it says the volume controls on full go to the uh, 1650 kilohertz end of the scale, and the tone control on bright. Now my generator, that's a transmitter, the generator is connected to the grid of the ECH81, and we'll have a look at that in a second, and we put it through the 200 and 800 ohm uh, series artificial antenna, dummy antenna. Now I'm going to connect an AC voltmeter to the uh, output transformer which is the plate of the output valve and I'll do that through a 0.01 capacitor. I've put some masking tape next to the IF uh, adjusting points so I can see the numbers and uh, it simply says to peak the IF transformers. Uh, there's four of them of course. To inject the uh, signal into the radio I've got a 400 ohm resistor, it's behind this um, heat shrink and a 200 puff cap in series and I've connected that onto the grid of the ECH81 mixer valve. To measure the output of the radio as I adjust it, I've put a 0.01 microfarad capacitor uh, onto the plate of the output valve, and I've connected an AC voltmeter to it. OK, I've got the radio on. I'm going to turn the volume up. The volume's on maximum. I've got 460 dialed into the frequency generator, and that's its um, IF frequency. And I've got the generator on the minimum it can put out. These are the IF transformers in the back here. Uh, they're numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4 in Roman numerals, so I've got to start there, 2, 3 and then finish with 4. Now we're ready to go, I'll start with uh, number 1 here. Just keep your eye on the meter. That's about that one. I'll just do number 2. And number three. And 
in number four. I'll just change the scale. So I'm just going to re-trim each one to make sure that they are on maximum. I didn't get any better uh, result adjusting them the second time so I'm happy now I'll move on to the next step. With that done the next step is to connect the uh, dummy antenna to the antenna and earth socket and then adjust the IF blocking circuit V which is 5 uh, to a minimum. Now most of the adjustments are marked here on this little sketch they give you. Uh, there's adjustment 1, 2, 3 and 4 for the IF so they're the three we do. There's no 5 or no V i searched everywhere on here. I scanned the schematic for ages trying to find an IF blocking circuit and there is none. I also went on a forum and asked their expert advice which they were very helpful but um, didn't resolve it and then I found this. Now once again my printer is not working so it's hard to see. That can is called BF4. I don't have it. I've got 5, 2 and 1. There's no 3 and 4. There's 3 there. 4 I don't, I don't have that, so that's not applicable to this radio. I spent half a day trying to work out what that was supposed to be, uh, all for nothing. So, <laughs> well, I did work out that I don't have it, so I'm going to skip that little instruction. The next step for the medium wave is to adjust the oscillator. So you wind it down to the left-hand side to 515 on the stop and adjust the pointer, make sure it's lining up. And it's the standard thing, you align the oscillator at one end, go to the other end and check it, and align it again, go back and keep checking. So you just go back and forth until you get the two lined up at 515 kilohertz and 1680 kilohertz. So have a go at that now. There's the pointer there, you can just see the red line through the uh, glass. So I wind it up to the other end. Right, I'll just stop here. These little checks in the uh, glass here are the lining alignment mark, I think. So I'll just align with those, and I think it should bottom out, but it's not. It keeps going. Now I'm supposed to adjust the pointer here. This is uh, sealed, this string on here. It hasn't touched from the factory. So what I can do is um, adjust this here uh, on the spindle of the condenser. I'll adjust it as they say. We'll see if we can get the results. If we can't, I'll put it back where it was and adjust it all again. So I should be able to undo this screw. Oh, that, that's turning freely on there. Uh, hang on. So that means I should be able to turn that. There we go. So now the condenser's bottomed out inside. Let's move it back again. I should be able to just line the pointer up. And do the screw up. I've lined up the uh, pointer on 550. You can just see 550 there, I think. It's very hard to see, even for me, much less through the camera. Now I've got the generator on 550 there, 550. Now this is the oscillator for the 550, so I turn that. We should get something. Hopefully I can pick that. Is. in there but that's okay. Now the other adjustment I have to do, I've got to slide this coil up and down on the loop stick uh, which might be interesting, I don't know you, I guess you can move it. I can't use my fingers, I don't know how you're supposed to do it. Well that's a problem, that wire is taut now and it needs to go a bit further it looks like. 
and it's not going to unwind easily. What I can probably do is move the whole loop stick up a bit in the grommet. Oh, there you go. All right, we'll try again. I think that's about it. I can't do any better than that. The next thing to do is wind the dial down to 1480 and that's got a little check mark in the glass. So I just move the dial out. There it is. So just fill the little dial there and that's uh, 1480 apparently. Now I'll switch my other generator. This one becomes a bit unstable at those uh, frequencies for some reason. So I'll go to the other generator. Now two adjustments for this end of the scale is this one here. Well, that one was spot on, so I'll leave that. And so is that. Now, I didn't have to adjust those pretty much at all, so when we go back to 550, I think it'll be spot on again. Okay, I'll set the generator at 550 again, and I'll just wind the pointer up, and hopefully it'll be 550, and I think it will be. What have we got? It's the most minutest bit out, but I'll just, I can probably just bring it back. I'll just watch the meter again. That's it. I'm leaving it at 550, it's good. So that completes the AM alignment. Uh, there is a long wave alignment, but we don't have long wave. Uh, I can probably still do it, I guess. Now to do the long wave, there's a little calibration mark checked into the dial there. That's a 210 kilohertz. So I've centered the uh, dial on that. Here's the uh, long wave thing. I'll just select long wave. I've got my frequency generator set at 210. This is the coil we adjust, so I'll just move that around a bit. Hang on. And that's that bit done. Now this is the other end of the loop stick, and this is for the long wave. So, I'll see if I can move it first. Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right, so I'll adjust it then. Let's bring it back a little. No, yeah, that's it. So that's the medium wave and long wave done. Now I've got to do FM. I'm going to have a go at FM alignment. I've never done it before and I haven't got the tools to do it anyway. The FM range on this radio is 87 to 100 megahertz. The modern range is 88 to 108. I don't quite understand how it works. My radio station which broadcasts at 100.3 should be up here somewhere. But it's not a stand in the center. So. Uh, whether someone's adjusted it to get more range or done something to it, I don't know. Uh, the point is, I can't, I can't test this um, alignment on this scale anyway, because I don't have the generator to generate the signals. The best I can do is put a 10.7 megahertz signal into it and just check the IF transformers, and hope that that produces a decent result. At the moment, it's a bit uh, noisy and I uh, can't pick up very many stations. So we'll see if we can rectify that a bit. I believe the IF alignment through a FM set is very similar to using AM, so shouldn't have any trouble with this. The signal from the generator is induced into the FM valve by uh, inserting a wire between its um, shield and the valve itself. Now I've still got the masking tape on, so most of these are marked except I think number two. Then it says apply a 10.7 megahertz uh, signal to it and uh, just adjust circles 4, 3, 1, 5, 2 and 6 in that order. After we finish those, 
We then put in an AM signal at 10.7 and we adjust number 6 just to get uh, the minimum. So, so I think that must block out AM signals from getting into the FM. Now there's the uh, little wire I've put in next to the valve on the FM uh, module there and I've got the signal generator connected to that. I've got 10.7 megahertz on the generator and I've got the modulation turned off. First thing it says to do is to detune number 6, so I'll just move that away from somewhere. The next thing to do is to detune number 2, and it's just it's located under the chassis here. I can get it from the back, so I'll just move that away. Don't quite get that myself. It says to, to pick number 4, number 3, number 5, 2, and then 6. So I'll start with number 4. Alright, that'll do that one. I'll do number three. Alright, and number five. I'm just going to do number two. And I'll just tune number six in again. Now it says to turn the modulation on, which I've done. Uh, I fine tune this now to get the peak it there, and that should have the minimum AM coming through. I think that's about it there. Alright, that completes that part. We'll see if it'll actually work. Okay, let's try it out. I can only get one station in here anyway, but uh, I just vaguely pick up some of the others. It should be about here somewhere. This is about recognising they have come from the very same communities that they're looking to support in a path that has gravel at, at the heart of its goal. In EPL News, Tottenham striker Harry Kane admits he'll consider moving away from the North London club. That is 100% better than what it was. And um, I'll see if there's any others. Might be up here. Nah, it's not much around. I haven't got an FM antenna. I've just coupled the uh, AM antenna into it and it's only going to pick up the local one that's only up the road. So I'm going to leave it like that. I apologise. I don't know anything about FM. This is the first time I've done one. I'll learn it as I go, as, as I have in the past with everything else. Um, I think the FM's okay. I'll take it outside uh, afterwards and uh, just try and uh, rig up a dipole aerial and see if I can get something. The chassis's done as far as I can go. The, uh, there's a couple of little things to tidy up. Uh, apart from that, it's um, pretty much ready to go back in the case for some last minute testing and make sure it does work properly. I checked the AM out and that's working really well, very well. Uh, so this is picking up stations I generally have trouble picking up. And once again, I apologise for not knowing enough about FM. I don't uh, listen to anything I say at any time, but uh, particularly the FM, just, uh, I just accept I don't know anything about it. I tried to uh, study up on the thing and uh, it's hard to get any really good information, but it's um, laid out easily enough to understand. Thanks for watching part two. With a bit of luck, I'll be back next week with part three. And I hope you join me for my next radio adventure.